Hi everyone, it's Bernard here on behalf of MovieGameNostalgia.com with information of what's new to the cinema and the movie theatre from the 8th of January 2020. So a new year, so this is the first time I've had two, you know, more than, I think there's four new movies today. So obviously it'll start picking up over the next few weeks, we'll get probably more with limited releases, but these are all pretty general release, so they're all available now. Uh, please, if you like these little informative vlogs and obviously the more deeper reviews I do from time to time, please uh, push the old subscribe button and push the bell notifications so when you know, you know when these little information vlogs and, and review vlogs are coming out for um, movies and also we do board games and posters and obviously a football one for my my uh, football club Manchester City. If you're interested in that, they're all on the playlist and all the, all the links are in the comments below, etc. Anyway, let's get on with the four new movies that have come out for you, available to watch this week. The first ones are quite a biggie, which I'm looking forward to. I've not had a chance to see this. I've looked at the trailers, and it's getting uh, pretty good reviews overall. The first one we're going to look at is 1917, so you can probably guess from the from the title what it's about. It's a 15 rating, an hour and 59 minutes, uh, a war drama. Two young British soldiers during the First World War are given an impossible mission deliver a message deep in enemy territory that will stop 1,000 men and one of their soldiers' brothers from walking straight into a deadly trap. It's directed by Sam Mendes and written also by Sam Mendes with uh, Christy Wilson-Cairns. It stars Dean Charles Chapman, George McKay, Daniel Mays and many more in this. Uh, this was shot and edited to appear as a single long take that takes place in real time, so it's, it's quite... No time shifting and messing about on this by the looks of it, which some of you might might be happy about. I mean, it, it does tend to be overdone to death now, doesn't it? This time shifting and flashing from one thing to another. But this this takes you from A to Z, which is, is always nice, isn't it? Is it any good? Well, looking at what we've got so far, the information we've got, uh, the Metascore Critics Rating, which is um, from Internet Movie Database. So this is all the critics, what they think. They give it a healthy 7.9 out of 10, which is really good. Uh, Variety's Peter De Bruges rated it 8 out of 10, and he commented, Astonishing as his filmmaking can be at times, it's Mendes's attention to character more than the technique that makes 1917 one of 2019's, because obviously they've made them, and now 2020, most impressive cinematic achievements. So he enjoyed it, and most of the critics do. And the users, the people thought it's not to have seen previews of this, etc., early showings at uh, festivals, etc., the Internet Movie Database user rating for that, so that's Joe Public, is 8.6 out of 10, which is really healthy. But there are quite a few not not as high high rated uh, reviews on there. I picked one out from a, a guy called Marma, who rated it 7 out of 10, which is a good score. And he rated this on the 4th of January 2020. He commented, 1917 is one of the better war films of recent years, even if it doesn't have a lot of fighting and war aspects until the end. I was, so obviously it's going to be a little bit verbally by the sounds of it and obviously build up the tension. I will compare this film to Dunkirk, which I didn't particularly like. I didn't think it was done well enough, to be honest with you. They both have similar a similar way to tell, tell the story. and Both films focus more on characters and their journey through hard years and experiencing them. This film has one of the best musical scores of the year and it dominates scenes and builds them with tension and even despair. This film is also visually great to look at. My only gripe was the same as in Dunkirk, that we didn't learn a lot about the characters and they felt very much unexplored. 1917 is definitely one of the better films of 2019 stroke 2020. So yeah, I mean, is it, some negatives there. It won't put me off. I'll um, obviously have made it. I'll be doing a, a fuller review on uh, 1917 uh, on the on behalf of uh, the moviegamenostalgia.com website, so it'll be on the blogs and I'll put it on Twitter as well. So if you follow me on Twitter at nostalgia underscore movie, you'll get to know all about uh, the reviews on these when I get a chance to watch them. So that's the first one we looked at. The next one we look at is called The Runaways, and it's a 12A, an hour and 53 minutes, and it's classed as an adventure film. After their home life is turned upside down, three children and the family's donkeys escape across the backbone of northern England, confronting both the harsh landscape and what it means. So this is more, very much a um, coming-of-age, young young people's drama by the looks of it, adventure film. Directed and, written, directed and written by Richard Heap. It stars Molly Windsor, Mark Addy, who I believe is terrific in it, and Tara Fitzgerald. 
Is it any good? Well, we don't have any critics uh, views on this yet, but we do have a, some people who've been lucky enough to see it at festivals, etc. who give it a... So we've got an IMDb Internet Movie Database user rating of 8.5 out of 10, so another really good score. And uh, IMDb user Matt on the 13th of April, so it has been around for quite a while, rated it 8 out of 10 and commented, was lucky enough to watch an early screening of this in Sheffield with writer, cameraman, director Rich Heat presenting for a question presenting and then doing a question and answer after the film what a thoroughly absorbing film it is the q a host after the film described the landscape as being one of the major characters in the film and she was not wrong it makes you want to forget holidaying in sunny spain well, well not spain but somewhere sunny is always nice when it's been cold like it has been here uh, it makes you want to forget holiday in sunny spain and stick to the north york moors uh, not not in january i don't think the children act superbly well if you're wrapped up yeah it's okay the children act superbly so there's some good kids actors in this especially molly and mark Addy is obviously shines. We took our kids age 10 and 12 to watch it. It's a very dark tale, but so refreshing for a film to appeal to the family audience without the usual disnification. Would we'll completely recommend it. So that looks like a really good family adventure film. And the, we don't get many of those, do we? We we you know we we get some that are supposedly like that. And we get a lot, lot of like science fiction things these days with kids, but it's good to an old-fashioned adventure film. I'm quite looking forward to that. So that's the runaways, which uh, is out on a bit more limited release and another one on limited release this week another totally different one again it's nice to have a, a different concoction of styles and film themes isn't it and when when these films come out so we've all got a chance of seeing something we like if we're very limited on our genres uh, now we've got Seberg, S-E-B-E-R-G, if that's pronounced correctly Seberg or Seberg. it's a 15 rated an hour and 42 minutes drama thriller biography and this is inspired by real events in the life of French New Wave icon Jean Seberg. In the late 60s, Hoover's FBI targeted her because of her political and romantic involvement with civil rights activist Hakim Jamal. Uh, this is directed by Benedict Andrews, stars Kristen Stewart, Ivan Attal and Gabrielle Sky. Uh, the critics, not overly favourable. The Metascore uh, rating is just 5.8 out of 10. Um, the playlist rated it 5.8 out of 10 as well, so I've picked a pretty bang average one. Uh, and they commented, with exquisite costume design, cinematography and a talented supporting cast, there's plenty to admire in Seberg. However, the film's sprawling and unwieldy narrative is ultimately what hinders it, leaving the drama that focuses in on a single person somehow feeling shallow and impersonal. And again, people who've lucky enough to have seen this already on previews, Internet movie database user rating is only a 4.7 out of 10. So for the public to give it a less score than the critics is is, is quite unusual, or it is unusual. So uh, user artist GR rated it only 4 out of 10 on the 18th of September 2019 and commented, yeah, I mean, I've used this as a sample, an example because this is mainly what most users are saying. He commented, it is sometimes hard to pinpoint where exactly films fail. The cinematography wasn't bad, and you can definitely see that Kirk Kristen Stewart tried. Everything else about the film was below mediocre. Characters were one-dimensional and lacked any depth plot development. From the very moment the two main characters meet and then meet again, it was abrupt and unbelievable. The other main characters, the good FBI agent versus the bad one, who was always got to have a good cop, bad cop, haven't we? Were just as shallow. Not to mention the wives whose role never went anywhere and might as well have not been in this film at all. In the end, it simply wasn't interesting to watch. Uh, it's something no amount of blank, long gazes and gratuitous nudity can fix. If you haven't yet, do yourself a favour and watch The Lives of Others, which I haven't, a 2006 German film that shares a similar theme but actually does it justice. So, I mean, based on that, I might go and watch The Lives of Others rather than uh, than this movie. But, hey, if you go along, if, if you fancy that, just to, to get your own judgment, please let me know in the comments below what you think of um, Seberg or Seberg. Please, please accept my pronunciation. I'm not, I'm not too sure how that's that said. And on to the last one, which I have seen, which it was absolutely. I'll, I'll tell you about it anyway. In my review in a moment, but uh, it's a film called Uncut Gems, which is a 15 rating. Uh, it's two hours, 15 minutes. It's called a crime drama mystery, so a bit of everything. And it's about Howard Ratner, played by Adam Sandler, a charismatic New York City jeweler 
always on the lookout for the next big score. When he makes a series of high-stakes bets that could lead to the windfall of a lifetime, Howard must perform a precarious high-wire act, balancing business, family and encroaching adversaries on all side, sides in his relentless pursuit of the ultimate win. It's directed by Benny Safdie and Josh Safdie. It stars Adam Sandler, Julia Fox, Kevin Garner, amongst others. Any good? Well, the Meta score critics, 8.9 out of 10, so nearly a 9 out of 10. You can't get a lot better than that, apart from actually, you know, apart from 10 out of 10s, can you? So the, the critics like it. And Los Angeles Times, Justin Chang, he rated it 9 out of 10, which is pretty much what the critics are saying, and wrote, directed with a relentless tension and diamond-hard intelligence by Josh and Benny Safdie, who early this month won directing honors from the New York Film Critics Circle. Uncut Gems is a thriller and a character study, a tragedy and a blast. So obviously he, he reflected what most critics were saying. Internet movie database user rating. So that's Joe Public, a little bit low, but lower, but 8.1 out of 10, which is still really, really good, obviously. Daryl Humble rated 8 out of 10 on the 29th of December 2019. And he commented, I've never been a Sandler fan. Well, I am. I'll admit that now. Always thought of his movies as juvenile to the extreme. Personally, he should stick more to dramas and thrillers going forward. I love the documentary style filming of this film, as well as the story never seems to slow down, which added to the tension. Nevertheless, the music score was horrible. Reminding, I'm not too really worried about the music, to be honest with you. Reminding me a lot of Pacino's Scarface, very dated electric music, which was overly loud and coarse. I can remember similar music in movies from the late 80s and early 90s. I mean, I mean the music didn't come into my view of this film whatsoever. And I've done a review here for uh, moviegamenostalgia.com. And uh, please, if you, you can check my full review on, on the website and on, on my uh, blogs on there. And I went on to say, I watched this film going in cold. I would no knowledge and possibly enjoyed it more because of this. I've always liked Sandler, similar to, say, a, Carrie, a Jim Carrey in Cable Guy. He plays a more serious role very well, with still elements of humour in what is ultimately a dark movie. Many people will not like the pace of the film and the constant machine gun verbal, and that is reflected by some poor ratings out there by the public. public. Critics, though, are fairly unanimous in their praise of this one, and I have to agree with them. will not be everyone's cup of tea, but if you enjoy the first 15 minutes, then it's for you. If not, just turn or, just turn yourself off or walk out of the cinema, as the story never really lets up or deviates, so will not be for you. And I gave it an overall rating of 8 out of 10. And if you know my scores, 8 out of 10 is pretty high <laughs> for me. I don't, I don't give many films... More than 7.5, 8 out of 10. But, um, yeah, Adam Sandler is absolutely superb in this. Adam Sandler's Adam Sandler, but this is obviously a darker side to this as well. And if you don't like Adam Sandler, you're, not going to, you're probably not going to watch the film because it just basically revolves around Adam Sandler throughout. So, please, if you like Adam Sandler, do not miss this film. It is absolutely uh, brilliant and uh, worth you going to watch. That's Uncut Gems, which is now on there. Uh, general release at the cinema uh so that that's with 1917 which i look forward to watching the runaways another brilliant film by the sounds of it seberg which is getting a bit average reviews isn't it and obviously this uncut gem so that's what's out at the cinema this week uh thank you so much for watching i hope you uh, enjoyed that it's 13 minutes so we kept it quite short again we try and keep these the little information videos short and if a film's ever worth a, a really big review then i come back on and sort that out and do a big review for you anyway thank you so much for watching uh whatever you're going to do with the rest of your day have a great one look after yourself look after your friends and especially look after your family and hopefully i'll see you all very very soon with something else that um, on one of my playlists so you know either watch those or look out for the next next thing i'll be doing so Please, thanks for watching. I'll see you all again. Bye-bye.